Wardrobe here. End of game, turn six. Uh, victory awaits. MMP, the short scenario, six turn scenario for the Smolensk uh, scenario. So, yeah, there's, yeah, I guess I, probably all scenarios have two versions. So there's probably actually six scenarios in this book. Um, well, actually seven, because you have the north, center, and south, and each probably have a short and a long scenario each, and then you have the whole campaign, and you probably have two of those, so there's a lot of scenarios in this, actually, so this is the short scenario, I had to get 60 points, and I got 50, I needed to capture basically one town, one more town, and that would either have been, each city is worth 10, that's either, um, of the, <laughs> of a, uh, I was telling one with Jeff from Hextex trying to pronounce it. Vitevsk. Oh my gosh. V I T E V S K. Sure. Uh, Smolensk or Gomel. Gomel. Well, Smolensk is the big one they talk about, right? But it's still only worth 10 as well. And these all had like strong, steadfast, and it would have been tough. But I didn't even make it to the Nyeper, or however you pronounce that. I'm sorry, all my Russian people that watch, all my millions of Russian people that watch this, all the bots. So really, I had made great advances up to like turn three or four. It was looking really awesome, and then it just stalled out. So um, here are my eight points that I want to talk about in no particular order. One, um, yeah, I'm just going to do them in the order I wrote them down. Replayability. So these games are great for replayability. See this long row here of counters here? Whoop, let me try to... So those are all the command shits. Well, those are going to come out. You can see they kind of came out Russian, Guderian, Russian. Oh, yeah, these are reinforcement, reinforcement, reserve, and then German, German, Soviet, supply, German. Well, I guess. So. Anyway, so, and I had some where Germans were a lot in a row and all at the beginning. And I don't know, and some that were just all mixed up. So that's replayable. It's also replayable because the Soviets have different ones they can put in. there. The Germans pretty much put everything in, but the Soviets have, you know, options of what to put in there. So that's cool. Um, and so that's going to change it every time you play. Um, another cool thing about this game that I did not make a bullet point, so I have nine bullet points, is that it really doesn't, you can kind of play, like if, I, if I had to, I could play it, and I could play a counter, a chit, or a command chit, and then go, go away, go back to work, go do stuff around the house, and come back and then continue playing. Kind of like Fighting Formations was, so that's kind of a cool thing. So, like, if I couldn't have got through, it it was taking me about an hour a turn. And sometimes more stuff was happening than not, right? Because, like, you know, maybe this turn, a lot of it was just moving stuff around and there wasn't a whole lot to do. Maybe someone only had a little bit of command in there, a couple units to command. Anyway, so replayability is good. Um, turns are easy to manage. Um, okay, well, I covered the scenarios. Uh, there's also a bunch of optional rules, which is cool. Like some of them make it tougher to um, manage uh, supply for the Soviets. Because right now the Soviets, all they have to do is just find these gaps. And they can really go all over the map and find them. So like these guys, you know, this guy here is in supply because he can sneak around. And these little trucks find all the back roads and doop 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 and they make it. Now, it wouldn't take much, and then, you know, they'd start to get out of supply and all that. But he actually has supply through here. He can sneak through. I, so I didn't need to take his supply all the way out there. Um, so supply is really easy to trace. Um, it's more strict on the Germans, of course. So there, the, the optional rules are cool. It's just And it tells you, like, you know, this rule uh, makes it harder for the Germans. This rule makes it harder for the Russians and all that. Um, I don't. I wouldn't need that even my next time playing because I'm still learning how to you know, play both sides correctly. I don't know if I play, so much played the Soviets correctly as I probably didn't play the Germans correctly on this. Um, so coordinating uh, better with the command and all that. So, you know, I made really great progress and I stalled out because I just ran out of energy. Um, basically with, you know, like this command unit would be up here and you had like three guys to command and I'm attacking across a major river that your attacks halved and and you can't just go over the river if you're in any, any enemy zone of control minor river you can so there's a lot of limitations so i just kind of ran out of steam the cool thing is i did get more command units that i could bring on and kind of move around um, because a, a cool thing is the flexibility of the command units my first i think i did this in the first turn only and i caught my mistake but like this second panzer grenadier he can command anyone within four hexes any german unit 
Um, so that's a lot of flexibility. So I was able to move these guys around more. Like if this guy activated now, I could move all, a lot of guys and move them up here. So that'd be cool. Um, so just trying to figure out how to better coordinate um, to make movement. Cause, and, and so, and speaking of that, so all these units here, these orange and green specifically, they were all way over here on this thing. And it was hard to beat these guys because there's a lot of river attacks. So those are halved. Well, what I need to do better is quickly get up here and block supply for the Soviets. And then get these guys because supply attrition is brutal in this. First turn, you're out, you flip. Everyone flips. I lost 24, the Soviets lost 24 steps and two units on their first, um, on their supply check where I was able to block it off finally. That's a lot. And then the next turn, they lost all those units. So, I mean, it's crazy. So that's why these Germans start flipping because they start getting out a little bit surrounded. Um, so I need to do that quicker so these guys can come around. I tried sneaking them around, but it's tough to do. They're only five movement, and really they're good for keeping this crap from happening. So this was a little little attack from the Soviets to kind of start coming around here and like, okay, we got you here. And then they started this little bulge here. And then you see a, quite an opening here that I, as a Soviet... I might start to take advantage of to cut these guys off supply um, because it's tougher for the Germans, right? I mean, so I would probably come come around over here. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. Basically, I'd probably just kind of surround these guys and then just try to slowly build up and it's probably swing these guys in around to maybe start actually attacking these guys. I mean, the, the, the attacking is pretty tough. It's a very attacker-friendly chart as far as, like, getting retreats and stuff, except for this freaking two-to-one. I'll tell you what. I don't really know. I didn't keep perfect track of it, but I pretty much rolled ones and twos when I rolled on this, and I was rolling, like, I felt like three, four, fives on everything else. But any time I rolled on two-to-one, I got a one or two. I think I got a three one time, but that was uncanny. It was very strange. So you don't want to attack. Really, you don't want to attack below that. I did a couple times because I was desperate, and it usually didn't end well. So, and usually just the Soviets trying to uh, take advantage of a exploit, uh, an opportunity. Um, so really, you need to be to the Dnieper by turn five, and that's when the Soviets or the Germans were there. You can see here it is. I did not even close. Um, at one point I was like, I'm going to go for Gomel down here because it was lightly defended and go, oh, but I, again, I stalled out. I didn't have the energy for it. Um, and it's a bummer. Uh, Smolensk was not, obviously not happening in this game at all. I didn't want even a consideration. This one honestly wasn't either. And I really, so I was really kind of wanted to go for that, but I just, I didn't have enough units. So I got to think through that and coordinating that attack better. So that's pretty cool. A lot of replayability. Um, Mogilev here is not worth anything point wise, but it would be crucial to get over here behind Smolensk in the river. Is that right? Yeah. Otherwise you're attacking Smolensk across a major river. Again, it's just have like a minor river, but it would help to get in there to do that. So, so if not going for Gomol, then really continue to push for Mogilev and create a gap in there and then get up there to freaking Smolensk. Um, before they can build that fort. Because now there's a fort and a stand fast. I don't even really know how those work because they never came up. So it's some, they basically are taking the hits. So it can it slows you down on the attack. Um, supply attrition, Mogilev, and yeah. So there's a lot that I didn't do in this game. Um, there's no air. Someone kind of, uh, kind of was a little bit astounded by that, but you don't really need it at this level. Like you don't need artillery. It's all figured up in the calcs in the, like the commands, actually you can attack with command. So you could say that's like artillery or something, I guess I didn't obviously very much because I didn't want to risk them on the Soviet or German side, but I did use them. Like I'd used them right here in attack. I used that too, to bump it up to another, uh, another ratio. Uh, the rounding down is kind of brutal, right? Cause you know, you might get a, five divided by two and two and a half and you're like can we just bump that up to three no it goes to two to one so that you know that sucks um but there's not a whole lot of counting like that like there's not a whole lot of counting for ratios and stuff because there's just there's not the numbers oh i like the limited stacking only two units only two units combat units if you have forts and stuff that doesn't count so that's cool your stacks are going to be small um i i gotta tell you it, it 
I think the next time I play this, I am tempted to put the whole campaign on there just to see what it looks like. I think that'd look pretty awesome. Um, and, and maybe just do the short scenario and just kind of figure out how to do that. I, I kind of want to do that, but I also like the idea of playing the shorter scenarios again. Um, uh, just because you can kind of, it, it's not as much commitment, you know, and, and without success. <laughs> uh, okay. These freaking marshes are a pain in the butt. So of course, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to say about that. The counters are nice and big. I've got a game that I'm going to play next for the bulge that have way bigger counters and the type is smaller than this and I can barely read them. So, um, but we'll talk about that when I play that game. Anyway, a good job, MMP. Uh, this guy, um, I need to get his name here. He, he needs to keep coming up with games, continue on the East front as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, cover early and later, uh, cover some of the post attacks. I don't think he has a fall blow really. That would be cool. Approaching Stalingrad, the relief, that could be cool. I don't know how this would play on the West Front. Maybe it wouldn't play as well because of the terrain. I, I'm not really sure, but it seems like it would work. So I don't know. Um, you know, I know not every system works for everything. It is, um, each X is 10 miles. Each turn is 10 days. Each unit is a division. I mean, wouldn't that work? I think you could do it on West Front. Um, what was the other thing I was going to look up? Oh, uh, the, the designer is... Um, Oh, shoot. Why don't they have this right on the front page? You goobers. You goobers. It's a Japanese dude. Japanese bro. Oh, here we go. Tets Tetsuya Nakamura. Keep making games, dude. I don't know if you're still around making them, but please, please continue. It's awesome. Well, here's what the whole map looks like. Now, look at that. How fantastic. And I just played with this. And so when you put them together, basically you're going to squinch because that they kind of really overlap like you're only playing with like this much of this map the, the otherwise the map overlaps so that's that's cool but look how awesome that'll be that's going to take up a big chunk of table um anyway so thanks uh jeff from hex to hex and i traded he sent all the victory games to me and i sent him a, a civil war game so you know i can trick that guy into anything with civil war i just said eh, it says acw he's like i'll take it so uh, I, I fooled him he's listening in while i'm recording this by the way so okay um now that's that. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Comment, subscribe, crush that bell, smash it, crush it, love it, play this game, roll dice. This is still available. A victory denied, a victory lost. I think, I don't think those are available. And if they are, one may be a bad game. But you can find them for okay, but this is still available. Get it while it's available. It took a long, long time to get this order in. So I don't know how much energy they have to put something else out in this kind of series. And they probably have a ton of them, and they'll probably sell them for years. I, I hope not, but buy this game. Buy A Victory Awaits. Nice intro level. If you want to, this is a good way to introduce people to uh, Hex Encounter uh, War Games. It's got all the concepts. Um, it's like I said, it plays pretty fast, especially the one mappers. Um, it changes up. The counters help you make decisions. That's a struggle with war games. It's like, I don't know what to do. It's like, well, you got you got to play these these orange guys. That's what you can do. So it at least kind of helps you limit and also helps you make decisions. Um, all right, that's that. See you guys.